Hey guys, welcome back to our weekly live event. We're talking about investing, finance, retirement planning, and especially real estate investing. I'm Pascal Corcus. Uh, as you guys know me, I'm here to teach you. I have an accounting firm, a real ins- I have an accounting firm, an insurance agency, and a mortgage company as well. So um, happy to help with all of your finance questions. All right, this is not. Good. Quality's not that great. What do you guys think? This is weird. Anyway. So I teach people how to um, buy investment properties. That's what my class is about. All right, so uh, it's a little funky, but we're gonna get this uh, on the road. How much money do you need to start buying real estate in cheap states like Texas? Uh, As little as $7,000, you know, as little as $7,000. I mean, you can do even less with the seller's credits. So this week's topic, let's jump right in. So this week's topic is about why why go from gold, and again, everyone on IG, uh, on YouTube, it's not flipped backwards. I know you guys are going to see everything backwards here, but on YouTube, it's not flipped backwards. Um, So the question is, why go from... Sorry, I got a little distracted. So today's topic is why are we going to go from gold to real estate? Guys, I'll answer your live requests uh, probably in like 15 minutes. Right now, I'm going to be going over um, this topic, and then I'll go into answering the questions. So right now, it's why go from gold to real estate? So right now, basically what I'm doing is I'm buying gold. And if I find an amazing real estate deal, then I'll buy the real estate deal. Otherwise, I'm focusing on gold, and then I'm going to transition to real estate in about 12 to 24 months. And um, what the reason is, is that when the real estate market, the financial markets start going down, In 12 to 24 months, the financial markets are going to go down because of the fact that there's going to be not that many people with jobs. There's going to be less money in the economy. The financial systems are going to contract. And when all of that happens, there's going to be less liquidity in the market. When there's less liquidity, there's less revenues, more businesses shut down, and the whole economy is going to start slowing down. We're going to go into a recession. When that happens, there is less people that are confident in the dollar there's less people confident in all fiat currencies when that happens people run to gold people are going to start buying gold because they're going to be concerned and when they're scared and concerned they want to buy own something that's a physical asset so when they're doing that they're going to buy gold once they buy gold um so they're going to call the, the price of the gold is going to end up going up. So back in 2008, gold hit like record highs. I'm forecasting that next year we're going to start seeing a significant rise in gold prices. So if you buy now, you're going to be able to see the price of gold go up significantly. So I'm buying gold now, thinking the price of gold probably is going to go up, say 50%, uh, maybe as high as 100%. So buying gold now. Let my cash increase or my the money that I put into the gold increase. Now, when in 12 to 24 months, when a lot of good real estate deals come available, I will sell my position in gold and move into buying more real estate. So regarding this topic, what questions do you guys have?
how do you invest in gold? So you can either buy physical gold, right? You don't want to buy jewelry because they, there's a huge markup on jewelry. What you want to do is buy physical gold, maybe coins, like because collectible coins are a great value to purchase co a gold. Or you can buy gold through uh, like a gold mining company, G-O-L-D ticker. That's the one I'm buying. Kevin says, gold is at an all-time high in the last few months. How do you know it's going to go higher? Because people are don't realize how bad the market is. People don't realize how bad the economy is. And I believe it's going to go even higher. Companies like Bank of America that have no gold position at all foresee that gold um, is going to be – is they're estimating gold is going to go to $3,000 an ounce. It's currently, I think, around like um, – 17. So a company that has no physical gold and doesn't make any money off of making that prediction is predicting that's going to go to $3,000 an ounce. So it's, I think it's an unbiased opinion. If you want to be a real estate investor, should you get a license? No. The Fed is buying all the debt. And the problem is, is they're going to end up uh, running out of money from the stimulus because there's so much debt out there that they're using debt to buy debt that it's not going to last. So because of that, it's going to um, cause inflation. It's going to devaluate the currency, which is going to make gold go up. Yes. So with the Fed spending all this money in printing, it's going to make uh, gold go up. So all, all uh, like gold, silver, things like that, they'll go up. Right, and silver is extremely undervalued. So if you don't have a lot of money in gold, you can buy silver. Uh, do I have a step-by-step -step video? I don't because it's pretty simple. You can either go to a coin shop or go on eBay and buy silver coins. Just make sure that you're buying them at a good price per ounce. So if you go to like coinflation.com, you'll be able to see the price per ounce and be able to determine, um, you know, what the good. Uh, what is a fair price to pay per ounce and try to get it as close to what they say is the spot price as possible. A good time to buy gold. Yes, it's a good time to buy gold. I think that's going to go up. Now, initially you might see it go down a little bit because everyone's going to think the economy is getting better. Everyone's going to think the economy is going to get better, but after that, um, it should go up. Fed says they will keep interest rates at practically zero until 2022. What do you think about that? Great answer, Kevin. So, a great question, Kevin. So, the Fed is going to keep it at zero for, since 2022. Well, if you think about what happened since 2000 and, um, 2008, the Fed basically kept interest rates at zero, right, till, say, about 2017, where then they started increasing interest rates, and then... Uh, they kept increasing interest rates. And around towards the end of 2018, we were seeing that the economy was slowing down significantly. So then they started having to reduce interest rates again. So we had to have extremely low interest rates just to keep the economy moving. The, the record low interest rates that we had previous to the coronavirus was necessary just to keep things moving. Like, we have to understand that if we had a, a normal Fed rate, our economy would have went to a halt before the coronavirus. So now the fact that we have to keep it at zero to just keep things moving is a problem. We're going to come to a time we're going to see that right now all of the, 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 the oil mining companies are going bankrupt. All of the car companies are going to go bankrupt. All the used car companies are going to go bankrupt. All of these, that's like a one seventh of the country's, um, you know, uh, GDP. We're, that's gone. So if you can see that, and then travel, a lot of these, um, all the Airbnbs, mom and pops, the hotels, the motels, airline industry also needs to be bailed out. That's another seventh of our economy. So when we're talking about two sevenths of our country, is, is basically needing to be bailed out. Of course, we're not going to be able to make it. There's not enough to, to make, to circulate the, 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 the our, our economy, the cash, cash, meaning liquidity. Cause 
we got to remember this, that 97% of our liquidity in the market is debt, is loans. It's not real cash, right? It's not people, that's not money people's, in people's savings account. So if people don't have money to spend, if Wells Fargo stops providing loans to the used car dealership so they could buy a used car to put it on their lot, they're not even going to be able to afford the cars to put on the lot. And then if people can't get loans to buy the cars, all of those sales are going to slow down. So we're going to have a significant pullback and we're going to start seeing that. And what they're not saying is they're not, they're not putting this out there so everyone feels good and continually spends. And you're going to feel good and you're going to consistently spend to get things back and back up and running. What they're going to realize is despite that they printed out over $2 trillion, that's not enough. That's not enough to fill the hole that was that was caused. And we're going to see that that's going to um, – you're going to see that we're going to have a big problem coming. And based off all the printing and based off of the fact that everyone's going to uh, – these large investors are going to get scared, they're going to run to gold. That's a normal play, to run to gold when things are bad. Now, you're going to say – or they what was said earlier – what was said earlier was – Gold is on a record high. Okay, gold is on a record high. But is it as high comparison to how high the stock market has gone up? Right? The stock market in 08 went from like 8,000 and now it's almost 30,000. But gold hasn't tripled. And gold is usually based off of inflation. It hasn't hit its mark. Silver hasn't hit its mark. So we have a significant rise that's going to be coming because the amount of money printed and the fear that's going to be coming in the market, I think people are going to start running to gold. It's going to bid the price up. And once it's at its height, I'm going to say close to probably 3,000. I'm probably going to sell probably around 2,700 to 3,000 gold price. And at that point, I'm going to pull my profits off and start buying more real estate. Now, today, if I find a great deal, I'll buy a property today. I'm not saying I won't buy a property. I'm saying, but if it's not an amazing deal, I won't do it. While I'm waiting, I'll just buy gold because gold's cheap right now. I know it's on a record high, but it's cheap compared to where it can go. Remember, the price you pay is doesn't determine if something's a good value. The, the asset itself is deter, determines if it's a value not the price you pay for the asset. So if you buy a $100,000 house, that doesn't mean it's cheap if it's in the bad neighborhood. And if you buy a million dollar property, it doesn't mean it's expensive, it depends on the neighborhood. Remember, you have to value the thing as it is. How much gold do you own? Uh, I don't own physical gold, I own physical silver. I own gold uh, stock, gold, G-O-L-D, the ticker, which is the mining company. Other than coins, what forms do you recommend? I mean, I like coins because with coins, there's also the artistic value. There's a collectible value to coins. So people will buy the coin just for the silver, but also people will buy it because if it's in very good condition, there's you can get um, you can get paid extra for that. And if it's an older coin and it's rare, you get more money for that as well. So Shakri says, do you have a step-by-step -step video on how to buy multiple property, uh, multi-unit properties? I started researching and I got in shock. They need 40% down, no bank willing to lend. They, they some want five to seven years loan only. Um, on my course, it, it shows the step-by-step -step on how I did it. On my course, it shows how I went from 23 units to the age of 23 and how I went from one loan to the next loan, one property to the next property, and how I constantly churned the loans to be able to grow. Right. And I think another opportunity is coming next year when the prices start falling. There's going to be a great opportunity for a lot of you guys to basically do the same thing that I did. And I'm going to be doing the same thing again. But this time, instead of going for like duplexes, or triplexes and quads, I'm going to be doing it for like uh, hotels. I'm going to be I'm going to be going for like hotels and plazas, like uh, small plazas. Everyone's going to be afraid of plazas. They're going to say, oh, uh, plazas are uh, commercial real estate is dead and it's uh, it's a bad investment. Well, I'm going to go in because when you get the best deals is when everyone says it's a bad investment. Because if everybody's saying it's a bad investment, no one's buying it. And if no one's buying it, that means the price should be cheaper than what it is. And that's when I'm going to go in and start buying 
the commercial plazas and the hotels and so on. And then when everyone's excited, that's when I'm going to, you know, oh, wow, these are great deals. When they finally realize what I already figured out, they're going to start coming into the market. And then, boom, ride that wave. Get 10 times my money like I did last time. The last time I did this, I made 10 times my money. So that means if I put $40,000 down on a deal, I made $400,000 uh, by the time I refied seven years later. So by the time that things go down, Let's just say they're going to start going down next year and the following year I'm going to start buying. I'm probably going to put in around two million, and if I if I, I'm going to I'm going to be shooting for properties, I can make ten times on my money. So by the time I'm done, I'll have twenty million uh, f- from that investment. So Shakri says um, five to seven amortization every five years. You have to refinance. Then you need to hire a management company to manage. You do not have to if you um, are are focused on uh, the, the type of properties I'm telling you to get initially. Initially, you need to be getting owner-occupied multi-units, and you move into the property. You don't need a professional management company then. After you have about two years of experience, you are then experienced as a management company, so then you won't need a management company again. Refinancing every five to seven years is not a bad idea, especially if you start buying next year where – if you buy next year, when it goes down five years later, everything's going to be worth more. So when you do a refinance, you can pull cash out and put more money in your pocket. So everything you mentioned seems negative because it just seems overwhelming. But in reality, it could be a positive thing if you use the rules to your benefit. Uh, Daniel says yes. Uh, Luciana says, hello, Pascal. When you want to sell the gold or silver, would these companies buy it back from you? Yes. People that buy and sell gold and silver, that's just what they do. They buy it. They sell it. They do that all day. Uh, for them, it doesn't matter. You know, Just like when you buy and sell property with a real estate agent, they, they charge a commission. Well, these shops do the same thing. They buy When you buy and sell, you charge a commission. Now, if you don't want to pay a commission, you can just go online or go on eBay or um, you can go on eBay and make, make the sale. But if you do it on eBay, then you're going to be paying eBay fees and then PayPal fees. And then you're now you're at like 11% in, in fees. So sometimes it's cheaper just to go to the coin shop and sell it there. Uh, then you can sell it yourself on, say, like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. But then you're running the risk of meeting people face to face and then trying to transact and possibly them stealing from you. Now, back in the day, I used to actually buy coins because I collect coins. Uh, from people face to face. So I would actually put something up on Craigslist and say, Hey, I buy gold and silver coins or I buy gold and silver. And, um, like, you know, you could buy it that way. One time I actually bought a gold chain, the chain, like literally like a chain on your wrist, not around your neck on your wrist. I waited out. It was like $2,000 worth of gold. And that's cost of metal. Not like what you would buy at a jewelry store for um, – because, you know, they charge like 50% more because obviously now they took the gold and they bent belt, they melted it into a, a design. So I paid $2,000 like raw metal cost uh, from this guy, but I paid him like $1,400 for it. So I made $600 immediately. I immediately took the gold. I went to um, the, a, a refinery right, or a guy that deals with the refinery. Sold it to him for um, 96% of gold cost. So I flipped it within a few hours for like $500 profit. Bought it in the morning, sold it in the afternoon, made 500 bucks. So that's another way I used to make some money off of gold and silver because it's the same thing like flipping cars. It's the same thing like flipping real estate. If you know what it's worth when it's finished or if you know what it's worth like at the, the sale amount you want to sell it for, all you have to do is buy it for less – than that amount, and you know you made a profit. Uh, Shakri says, yes, very, very overwhelming. Thanks. So what you got to understand, it is an overwhelming process if you do not study enough. If you don't study enough, you'll get so overwhelmed you won't do it. If you study enough, if you watch my videos, I mean, you learn all this in my course, like it's going to build your comfort level because I'm going to be repeating it again and again and again. Everything you're going to do, it talks about it in the course. So when you're seeing it and you're going through it, you're like, all right, Pascal already mentioned this. I, I should expect this. 
I shouldn't be surprised. I should expect this. So since you're expecting it, you're not thrown back. You're not shocked. So you're like comfortable with the idea. And then when it's happening, you can just go through it. But what most people do is something normal happens in the real estate transaction. I mean, something normal happens. It never goes smooth. There's always some type of hiccup. But some type of hiccup happens. They freak out and they just stop. And that's the worst thing to do. What you need to do is study enough so you know when the hiccup happens, because it will happen. You just don't know how it's going to happen. But when it happens, you are prepared for that, and you can comfortably overcome it. Excuse me. And then when you're overcoming it, you can keep moving through it. And sometimes those hiccups happen, they're to your benefit, because you can find other ways to get discounts on the property. So these hiccups are not a negative. Now, Shakri was mentioning a lot of stuff that seemed like negatives, but in reality, they were not negatives. They were actually positives, but it seemed negatives because there were so many moving parts that he didn't understand how to assess it um, and, and use those, those moving parts to your benefit. So remember, it's not a negative. It's probably a positive. You just don't know how to properly respond to that uh, reaction. Imagine it like being a boxing match, right? Someone could be like really mad. Oh man, he just jabbed me. He just gave me a cross. He just gave me a hook. Okay, yes, he is striking, but that's a good thing because if you know he's going to jab you, you know how to counter. If you can figure out what's the possible moves, that, the, the attacks that are going to come, you're going to automatically know how to counter and be ready and actually use that to your advantage so you can strike and make a profit. You can win because that's what's a great thing about investing. You got to understand this is a sport. When you're playing with guys that are already like, like for me, why do I keep doing this? This is my sport. I don't watch football. I don't watch basketball. I watch investors. I see how they act. I see how they respond, what moves they make. And then I figure out, okay, what moves am I going to make? Because I'm trying to win my game, which is investing. So my move is this. I'm going to slide into gold. I'm going to slide into silver. I'm going to let it go up. Initially, I'm going to look like I'm losing the fight because gold and silver might go down some. I'm going to buy more. And then I'm going to go turn it around as everyone sees, oh, shit, the market's turning around. Things are worse than what they are. Start climbing. Once it hits up to the top, around probably $2,700 for uh, gold, I'm going to be out. I'm going to start buying more real estate. I'm going to be buying all of the stuff um, that people think are bad, like hotels, like plazas, like restaurants in amazing areas. I'm going to buy those that, that land. And everyone's going to be like, wow, why are you buying these bad assets? Because they're not bad. They're discounted. And then they're going to start climbing. So... Now, someone asked, how can I become a realtor? Get your real estate license. Do you want to be an investor? You don't need a real estate license. Tickers for gold and silver. So the ticker I use is G-O-L-D, which is actually a gold mining company. Now, there's another ticker for gold that's a more conservative option, which is G-L-D, which that one is, a, I think, a spider, and that one is a mix of a bunch of different gold stocks. So, But I'm being a little bit riskier, and I'm actually buying into G-O-L-D ticker. That's my move personally. You can figure out what you can stomach more. If you're a smaller time player and you just want to try, go buy some coins. Go on eBay and buy a, a roll of quarters or a roll of dimes. You can pick up a roll of dimes for like 40 bucks, you know, but then you're going to pay like $5 in shipping. So just kind of keep it in mind or you can buy it from, you know, just keep it in mind. You know, you'll learn a lot about like what they call true currency or real money, real money being gold and silver. That's what a lot of uh, old, old school investors taught me. Real money is gold and silver. Paper money is a loan. The money that you're getting from the government, the $100 bill, that's called fiat currency. So fiat currency is, imagine, just imagine fiat like fake. You know, it's this note. It says this note is legal tender. It says this note is legal tender. It's really blurry right now. Anyway, the point is, it's fake. It's not real money. The government print makes a loan 
And this loan is these dollars that are being printed out. And the government says, hey, I promise, guys, I promise these dollars that we're printing, this loan is good. And, I'm, and I'll pay you guys back. You know, uh, Back in the day, prior to the 80s, they would pay you back with actual gold. You took your money and you brought it to the reserve. You can say this money is in exchange for gold and silver. I want my gold and silver. Well, they now they they took they disconnected that and dollars. You know these this fiat currency isn't connected to gold and silver anymore. It's just like hey, just trust me. That's what happened. They went from like the U.S. government says, hey, we're gonna give out money and our money is backed by gold and silver. In 1980, they removed it. They disconnected it and they said, hey guys, you know what? We're not connected to gold and silver anymore. Just trust me. You'll our money is good. I mean, it's really no different if I go and put on a piece of paper, I owe you. If that's really what it is. If I wrote on a piece of paper and I created my Bascal Bucks, who wants Bascal Bucks? So if I made Bascal Bucks and on here it said $100 and I handed it out to you guys and I said, here, these Bascal Bucks are good. And you're like, what's it backed by? Is it backed by your real estate? Is it backed by your gold and silver that you have? What is it backed by? Well, it's backed. I said, it's backed by my promise. I promise I'm going to give it back to you. That's what it's backed by. So right now, the gold, the dollar, American dollar is the world reserve currency. That means all the countries in the world use the dollar for some type of trade. They use it for oil trade and they do it for different types of trade. So when you're trying to trade currencies, a lot of times they'll go from to the dollar and then back to a different currency. Eventually, the U.S. dollar, the government is going to print so much money that there's going to be a point where the government is going to cross the line and the world is going to be like, I don't trust it anymore. And then it's going to lose its, uh, it's going to lose its uh, faith. So uh, EBCPA says, thoughts on Bitcoin and Ethereum. So this is the thing with that. I do know that not crypto, but you know the, the 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 technology behind crypto will last and has a place. It does have a place in 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 this world. Okay. Do I know which one is going to win? I don't. I will say I have ten thousand dollars in um, I'm, uh, the one that's backed by the Japanese banks. I forget the name. So I do own one crypto, but this is my kind of like gamble because I cannot tell you through measurement. No, I don't think it's Litecoin. Uh, I can't measure. I cannot calculate. Like, you know, EBCPA, your CPA, your numbers, you calculate stuff. I'm an accountant as well. I calculate things. You cannot calculate which, 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 um, which, like, you know, coin is going to win. Like, you can't. Like, back in the day, everyone thought AOL was going to win. Everyone thought Yahoo was going to win. Like, you know, Google took over. So you don't know which one's going to win. Um, but blockchain technology is here and it's going to last forever. Now, who's going to win this blockchain, te blockchain technology? I don't know. Um, so I want, to, I, want, I want that Bascal Bucks. I want that Bascal knowledge. Uh, that's funny. I should come out with Bascal Bucks. Maybe make a shirt or something. That'd be cool. All right. So, guys... Um, Whoever wanted to go live and ask your questions, go live, ask your questions. I'm here for you guys. I want to give you as much knowledge as possible. What's the budget to start trading or Forex? Forex is like you can start with almost like 20 bucks, 100 bucks. I mean, there's really, there's not really a amount you need to start with. Understand that there's big players in the Forex game. So, under you know, you can make money, but you can lose money very fast. The reason why I like real estate is that you don't need a crazy amount of money to get into it. As long as you're just very good at calculating your decision, you know, you can come in conservatively and, and, and make it. All right. 
uh, EBCPS has agreed. The ledger is definitely here to stay. I don't invest in Bitcoin, but it seems like everyone is invested. I personally don't understand it. So to understand, to, to explain Bitcoin, right, I'm going to try to explain it to you the best way I can, all right? The, the simplest way I can. The idea of Bitcoin is that the U.S. government and the other governments in the world keep printing more money. And every time that they say, for example, they have um, – say they have – Say they have a $10. The whole world only has $10. If the U.S. government prints more coin and now has $20 in the world, that doesn't mean there's more money for everyone to spend. All that means is it's going to take twice as many dollars to buy the same thing. All right. So I have a, I have a 1978 Datsun. A 1978 Datsun decked out back, eight, back in the 80s was $7,000. Like all the bells and whistles. Today, uh, I have a, it was a Datsun 280Z. The grandson of that car is the Nissan 370Z. Okay? That car is $60,000. It's not $60,000 because it has more technology and more safety and whatever. No, our technology got better, more efficient. Everything we have has gotten cheaper and better, more efficient, easier to produce. What's changed is is our currency is only worth 10 cents of what it was worth. That's why back in the day, in 1980, you could make $10, $12 an hour and then go buy a house for $30,000. Where today, to buy the same house is $300,000. It's not that the house is better. It's that our money is worth less. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So because currency is worth less, the, the dollar is worth less because it's an IOU. And now they basically, the U.S. government said, you know, IOU at, you know, what was it? A hundred billion. And then now the IOU is four trillion. And because the IOU has gotten, IOU has gotten bigger, the value of the IOU is worth less. Now people are like, eh, it doesn't mean as much. Like, you gave the last guy $100 million. I want $200 million if you really want it to be worth something. So you got to understand that. So the idea of Bitcoin is that you cannot print past a certain point. That is the concept. And the government doesn't have control of it. That's the concept of it. That the government doesn't have control of this. It doesn't know what you're doing. You can do what you want. The government's not going to tell you you owe tax on this because it's kind of hidden. That was the original concept of Bitcoin, that it's that is off grid basically. What I'm trying to tell you is that it is a future there, but I can't tell you which one because now you're basically telling me that I have to have faith in Bitcoin, which is backed by no government and nothing. That's a very hard concept, right? So. The same idea, though, is with gold and silver. Gold and silver is owned by no country. No government can print more. They cannot make more. Forever they've been trying to do alchemy, which create gold out of something else. And even if they did that, it would reduce the value of gold and gold would devaluate. So even if they did it with gold, the same problem would happen. The point is this, is that gold and silver is the currency that is outside of governments that can transact, but it's not fast like a digital currency. So that's where I think digital currency will have a play and will have value. The question is which one? I do believe the one I'm, I am backing the one that ha, that's uh, that's has support by a hundred banks currently and is um, originally banked backed by a Japanese bank. So uh, I forget the name of that one. Um, I don't know. One of you guys should know the name of it. Best mindset training you recommend? By basically reading books, like um, how to win friends and influence people. We'll teach you how to act and treat people. Um, think and grow rich. We'll think about thinking beyond your current means. Remember, we talk about money. Money is not real. Like 
Um, yeah, Ripple. That's it. Um, thanks, Luke. So, uh, money's not real. It's fabricated. It's fake. You're, you're assessing a value onto something. That's why, you know, back in the day, they used to sell pet rocks. They used to sell rocks for $20. You can pick up a rock outside for free, but they were selling one rock for $20 and everybody wanted one. Money's not real. So you have to change the way you think. And once you change the way you think, you'll be able to do it. So um, those are two books I recommend reading. And then from there, there's a thousand other books. But reading it is not enough. You have to act. You must do something in, in faith. And even if you make a mistake and fumble, you got to keep pushing and keep going. Because that mindset will change once you put action behind it. But if you don't put action behind it, it won't change. Your mindset, your faith is like a muscle. If you do not exercise it, it will get weaker. You need to exercise it. You need to push yourself. Get out of the side of your comfort zone so you can grow. And if you keep doing that, you yourself will get comfortable of being uncomfortable. Now, like some people hate doing startups, right? They hate creating – after they started creating their first business and finally grew to a certain point, they're comfortable. They don't want to do anymore. Well, I've gotten so used to creating so many startups, I'm just used to the startup life. Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Benjamin Graham uh, has a lot of great books. And there's also Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. All right, let's see uh, what questions we have for me today. All right. How do I get rich being in a third world country? Allegedly, we going to have 5 BP in 2021. So in a third world country, normally the inflation is higher than it is in America. So because it's higher, you can actually get wealthier faster. But you need to use loans to do that. So what happens is a lot of people in third world countries, their focus is, let me pay off my loans. I just bought a property. Let me pay that loan off. And that's it. It doesn't work like that there and it doesn't work like that here. As long as the asset you're buying is higher than what you're paying for it, the loan amount, you're going to build wealth over time. You need to make sure your cash flow is good enough to cover the debt payments. But over five and 10 years, you're going to build so much wealth because of inflation. That is where it's created. The way most people in America and in third world countries, they do the same thing. They work to pay their debts and they think that's how they get rich. That is not how you get rich. If you do that, you will just be poor. And even though you would pay off all your loans, you're still going to be poor because the inflation will grow so fast. And in the next 10 years, our inflation is going to be crazy. It's going to crash and then it's going to skyrocket, meaning assets are going to crash. Real estate and stocks will go down and then it's going to skyrocket in price because our inflation will be crazy. And if you're focusing on paying off debts and instead of, instead of building wealth, you're going to be left behind. You need to change the way you're thinking. Again, in my course, there's a think, there's a there's a how do wealthy people think? You need to listen to that part to understand how the game is played. The game is not played by paying off your home loan. If you have a 15% interest rate credit card or car loan, pay that off. But it's not how you become wealthy if you're paying off your your uh, loans that are under like say five or six percent. You should be focusing on reinvesting your money and making significant gains that way. So where's the best place to buy a duplex? So really, Blaine, it depends uh, where you're looking to, to live, right? I mean, you could buy duplexes in many states and the price of the duplex will change depending on 
what your um, what your goals are, right? So let's put it like this. Why the price of it doesn't matter? Because people have asked me to run numbers. I'm going to run a really basic number here, and it's not going to make a lot of sense, but it should make some sense. This is why it doesn't matter where you buy the duplex. The, these numbers only count. Do you guys actually want me to run the numbers? Like, if you want me to run real quick numbers, I'll do it just so you can get a good, a rough idea of, uh, you know, just yes or no, if you want me to run the number real quick. Do you sell courses? Yes, I have a course on foundations of personal finance, teaches you everything that I learned to get you to 23 units by the age of 23. So by 19, I started buying real estate at 23. I own 23 units. Basically, teaches you all the financial information that I knew that got me to that point. All right, cool. You guys want to do it? I'll do it. This is one simple number. Hey, what's up, buddy? How you doing? How are you? So, Good. Thanks for doing this. No problem. It's one simple number. Cap rate over the interest rate. And this is on a 30-year loan interest rate. Okay? As long as your cap rate, let's say, for example, is 5% and your 30-year interest rate is 3.5%, if you have a 1.5 difference, you're good. The bigger, the bigger you get this, the more money you'll make. Now, you must consider that you need to be in a good area because you can get a 10 cap in the hood, but you're never going to appreciate, so you won't build wealth. You'll get cash flow, but you won't build wealth. So you need to find a good area with a fair cap rate because then your wealth will grow as well. This is a basic number that means a thousand things, right? It's like the thing where it's very easy to understand, but it takes a lifetime to master. This is it. As long as you have a 1.5 difference between cap rate and your interest rate. That's it. The better, right? Like I try to find, I try to get eight cap deals on a 3.5 interest rate loan. That means I'm taking, I'm making tons of money. And normally I'll buy really beat up properties that aren't giving me any money, but I invest money in it. So by the time I'm done, based off of my cost, I'm at a 10 cap. I'm at a 10 cap over a 3.5 interest rate loan. I'm getting a 6.5 difference. Making a ton of money. My last deal. Huh? Go ahead. So you're making 6.5% on your money in that example? I'm actually making... No. I, on a, for example, on a 10 cap deal, I would be making right. 10 cap on, on my money if it was all cash. But I'm actually making more than that because I'm using the bank's money. So then on top of this, I'm using the Burr method. I'll give you... I'll, 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 I'll read you. I'll give you another example. I bought. Do you find, go ahead with your question. I can do two things at one time. Do you finance all of your deals or do you do all cash? Depends on the deal. Like my one of my duplex, I paid all cash for it. Then I paid I paid about one hundred and forty thousand. Okay, so this one's okay. Duplex. I paid one forty three. I spent seventy, say seven, on it. I'm in for two ten. Well, the rent I was bringing in was like three thousand a month, which that means it was worth three thirty. So I had one twenty in equity. Six months later, I refinanced Burr method, right? This is just the Burr method, right? Except with bigger deals. I refinance. The bank will give me a Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac will give me seventy percent easy, seventy percent of this number. So that's basically 210. So I got all my money back. I now have zero dollars in this deal. No money in this deal, but I'm still pocketing a thousand dollars a month. So that's this is an example of um, a, a 10 cap at a 3.5 percent deal. If you can do 10 cap at a 3.5 deal, that means you'll have no money in the deal by the time you're done because you'll be able to pull out all your equity. And then you're going to basically be able to burn method. The closer you get to this, 
means the less money you're going to have to the deal. But even if you go as low as five, you'll still make money. Closer to 10, you'll make crazy money. So what's your question? Go ahead. Yeah. I've invested up to like an hour and 15 minutes away from me. Okay. I haven't had to for, for multiple reasons. One, my market is really good. The, t the Florida market is awesome. We have uh, over the next 15 years, we have what's called the silver tsunami coming, which means all the retired people are going to be moving to the south. Florida, Texas, Arizona, um, anywhere that's warm. You might have some people that move to Tennessee, North Carolina, because they want better than Chicago, New York weather, but you know it's a little bit better. Uh, but to the point, we're going to get a ton of people down here. So they're going to cause prices to go up because the demand is going to go up. Right. On top of that, our market's constantly getting better, and the laws are in our favor as uh, landlords. So based off of all those factors, it's just really great to do business down here. Now, if I was in like, like – uh, I don't know, like uh, New York or Chicago, or if I was in like, uh, like I'm New York, New Jersey. You're New York, so like in New York, New Jersey, I would never do a landlord. I wouldn't. I would not be. I I grew up in New, I grew up in Patterson, so like I wouldn't do it. You know, you got nine months. Like right now, because of COVID, twelve months they don't have to pay rent. In Florida, you have until July, which is two to three months, which is crazy because normally if I did an eviction in Florida, three month, three weeks, I have them out. Even if you had a lawyer, I've had people when I was like 19, 20, whatever. They got a lawyer. I went in. I'm by myself. Uh, I went against their lawyer, and it only took me five weeks to get them out. So in, in New Jersey, New York, L.A., you're spending $9,000, you know, where me, I spent $400, <laughs> you know. And it could take up to a year. Yeah, so I'm like, if you look at it, and then the growth and whatever, like Florida growth is really good. The cap rates, the, the cash flow, Arizona, Texas is good. So you just make sure that you're buying in good. Um, I, I like buying like in secondary markets, sometimes tertiary markets, you know. Um, not like in the – like in Tampa, Tampa, I don't buy because you're only getting a five cap. Now, you can make five caps work, but I prefer to go for more like an eight cap or, you know, something like that. So what would be your lowest tolerable – well, I bought a zero cap before. I'll give you an example of my zero cap. But there, it depends why. Like there's 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 reasons for everything. So you would have to know why. So for example, the Safety Harbor project, the one that you see online, I bought that for $950,000. Okay? And that was zero profit, zero cap. I invested I would say about maybe 700000 in it. Okay. So now I'm at 1.65. Another, another number you can go off to, it's a very conservative number, is uh, the 10th, the, 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 the hundred rule. The hundred rule. Okay. So if I divide this by 100, I should be able to bring this in per month. The 100 rule or the 1% rule, okay? So that means I should bring in $16,500 a month on this property. If I'm doing that or coming close to it, I'm good. So even though I bought it at a zero cap, my actual income on this deal is $22,500. I did almost 50% better than the rule. So that means I'm making crazy money. You know, based off of an, on a five cap, this property is worth $3.2 million. I have $1.65 million. I 
doubled the value and I only have in it 700,000. So I took 700,000 and made 1.65 million off of it in one year. Now I've done the same thing last year on a duplex. So you could do it on a duplex. You could do it on a 50 unit project. The thing is, do you have the resources to do it in a timely manner? So normally you get started by doing on a duplex, tries and quads. You do a couple of those, you get comfortable. Now you can grow and scale. Now that's if you want to do every aspect. I do every aspect. I manage in-house. I do construction in-house. I, I do everything. I do my own taxes. I do my own insurance. I own all these companies. I own them. So I'm one of those sickos that love doing everything. Now there's other people out there that just want to be an investor where they team up with someone like me and then I do one part, they do one part, whatever, and they don't have the time or energy. They don't have the connections to the construction teams. So it's so that's where I'm, what I'm teaching the stuff I'm teaching credit as a guy that worked with credit cleaners. I'm teaching taxes as a guy that does taxes. I'm teaching lending and because I do lending and I was a banker. Like I'm teaching the aspect of industry uh, insiders to show you this is what you have to do because this is what we're going to look at and this is what we want to see. So I'm basically telling you guys what we want to see so you guys can look good to get approved. So what right now I'm teaching the, the, the foundations of finance because most people, what I see the problem is either they don't know credit, they don't know how to set up their tax returns right, uh, they don't understand the, the game, so I'm teaching them thinking, they don't understand loans, they don't understand finding deals, running numbers, they, you know, they don't know any of that stuff. So what most people's problems is when they're going to do a deal, they get denied. When they're going to submit an offer, they get denied. So mostly they, they hit these walls. And normally when they hit one, there's like five, five pillars of personal finance. So I'm teaching them. So you can get denied at any point. And if you just give up, most people will just give up at that point. Oh, I can't do it. Well, no, you just don't know. So here, understand this. Now you're going to be 80% good here, right? And, and you're going to be strong in each section. So then when you're going, you're not going to, you're going to kind of know this problem can come up. So you're trying to resolve it before they even stop you. So that's what I'm teaching. Now I'm not teaching construction. Like I know I did literally every job. I fixed the roof. I've done electrical. I've done the plumbing. I'm not teaching that part because honestly, that's getting too far down the rabbit hole. It's not necessary. It's a waste of time. You should just pay someone to do it. They'll do it faster. You can focus on your profession because my goal is this. You do your job. You make your money. You invest in real estate. You live in the real estate. You grow your assets and you keep growing. So like in my course, I explained the nurse. The nurse is making $50,000 a year. I show how she can make by year three of being a real estate investor, make $50,000 a year and still work as a nurse making $50,000 a year. And then by year five, She's making more money in her rental properties than she is as a nurse. Now she can still do both. You know, like there's no need for you to be the landlord. You can hire someone to be the landlord and you just continue being a nurse and let them manage the headache. Because some people are like, I hate being a landlord. Well, then don't. You know, don't just go and do your job and let someone else do it and just pay them for it. Now, that's another problem. A lot of people get cheap and they don't want to pay people for stuff. Don't be that way, right? If you think this is this, and I'm telling you, this is the way you got to think. If you think you don't want to pay someone for something, you rather do it yourself to save the money. What you're saying is there's not enough money out there in the universe that I need to keep it all. And when you say that, you're denying yourself from all this stuff that can come to you. You're really denying it from coming because there's not enough. You start thinking there's not enough. There is way more than enough. I mean, there's a lot of money out there, but you have to go out and be faithful to go get it. You know, most people don't even try. That's number one problem that I see. People don't try and they take some easy thing that ends up just wastes their time just because it's a uh, satisfies their like their need at the moment for attention or whatever and they just blow all their money like this guy 
He had $30,000 saved up. He wanted to invest it in the business or real estate. He just kept getting hungry. He wanted to do something. He got bored. Finally, he gave up. He bought himself like this new Mustang. Then, obviously, six months, a year later, the Mustang lost 30% of its value. He went and then found a business that's really good that he wanted to buy, and he had no money for it. But he wasn't patient. He didn't study. He wasn't, like, focused, and then he had to restart all over again. So it's, it's you have to be patient. You have to be ready. So um, it took me years to get to this level. And when I started, I knew, hey, I'm starting here and I'm going to work my way up. And I'm finally towards the, like, people are like, well, why are you still working? Well, I've been focusing my whole life to get into the NBA. I'm going to quit now that I'm here. No, I'm ready to take on these, you know, big league players. And I want to be at their level and playing this game. That's what excites me. So you have to have an excitement for the game or at least team up with someone that has an excitement for the game. Because otherwise... If you're really just in it for the money, you're going to end up making some bad moves. Right. So one more question, and then I'll, I'll hop off. I really appreciate your time, by the way. No problem. You're um, good. In terms of your in terms of your course to you and like a like mentorship, what kind of access would would someone get to you and like on a daily basis, on like a bi-weekly basis? So How will, like involved? So basically it's more like on a bi-weekly basis that like I'm accessible for like questions, Q and a in the course, there's a question section where you can leave your questions. I go back in and answer them. You'll watch that one part. I'll go fill in. You're like, Hey, I just watched this. What can you explain this? And you give it, I'll give examples based off of your question. Um, so like one question was, uh, Lucina, Lucina bought the course. She's actually on YouTube right now. Um, she bought the course and she said, Hey, in your course, it says, on um for a credit it says if you get a car loan through a buy here pay here dealership they do not s submit your information to the credit bureaus when it's positive they only submit negative information to the credit bureaus so if you got a car loan to build your credit it will not build your credit you need to get the car loan from a from a big dealership or from a bank she's like well i got one from there is it going to build the credit i said no she then contacted them and she said, hey, they said they're going to supply me with a letter. So next time I want to get another car loan, they're going to, I'm going to have this letter so they'll be willing to approve me for the car loan. I said, okay, that's a good idea. That's nice. But the concept that I'm teaching you is to build up your credit score high. So when you go to the bank, they'll give you a lower interest rate when you get a loan. And it, that car loan, you're paying, if it's a buy here, pay here, it's normally say 10 to 20% interest rate. And it's not helping you. So this loan is not benefiting you. You should just try to pay it off or refinance into a bank loan where it will show up on your credit so it can help build your credit over time. So that was a question that was brought to me and then I, I answer it. So, and normally I like the question brought into a platform in, in the sense on the platform where I can answer it and show everybody. So in the comment section of the course or on the live event right now, I'll encourage the questions to be asked. So I can be able to teach everyone at one time to say, hey, look, here's the answer. But again, you get one-on-one -on -one access to me to answer your questions. All right, man. Thank you. Cool. And for everyone that wants to know the course, the link is in the bio. Yeah. Right now it's only $297. And basically that's my cost between all the software and everything I had to pay for. Um, if you review the course, most of the people that sell courses tell me I should have charged like 3000 for it. So I uh, hope you guys appreciate what I'm doing for you guys. And um, buddy, I'll uh, see you next time. Yeah, we'll talk soon. Thank you. Take care. You too. All right, Adam. All right. Any other questions? Uh, Lucina says, do you think real estate prices will go down to the prices in 2008? When you go to uh, Zillow, most of them have the price sold around that time. So do I think they're going to – do? I, will there be some prices that are going to be rock bottom low? Yes. Are we going to have a ridiculous amount of them? We might not be able to get that access to a, a significant amount of them 
for because they might sell them as packages to hedge funds. But we will have opportunities to probably pick up a few. What's happening now is a lot of these hedge funds are getting into the game. Well, they'll buy a full package. They'll buy like $20 million worth of homes, one shot. So not until probably a year, a year and a half from now, will we start being able to get our chances to be like, all right, we're going to start releasing a little bit at a time. We need to be prepared for that because when it comes up for sale, we need to be able to pick it up quickly. And that's why the course is important to make sure that there's nothing there in your personal finances that's going to keep you from qualifying from purchasing your first, second, third, or fourth property. Again, the concept in the course is what took me from one property to seven properties from 19 to 23. The finance knowledge that I knew I'm trying to give to you guys so you guys can make the same moves on those properties. <laughs> Mary, will you marry me? Oh, that's funny. Uh, I, I will marry you. That's funny. All right. So, um, all right. Uh, what, what city am I investing in now? I invest in Pinellas County, Florida. So like mostly around Clearwater area. Where is it, where to invest in a post COVID situation? I think that there's gonna be a significant amount of people moving down from up North and from areas that are very densely populated to areas that are not as densely populated in areas that are not as cold because in warm weather, there's not as much fluid and there's not much COVID issues. I believe people are going to get tired of being stuck in small places and they're going to want a little bit more space. I think the standard of living for people is going to change. I believe that since we're getting becoming more of a tech society, we're going to be having a lot more people working from home. And those people are going to start deciding to move further away. That's what I think is going to happen. Well, that I think I know that's what's going to happen. And it's just going to take a little bit of time to roll out. After your first FHA loan, what other loan would you go for on your second property? Well, if you do, if you purchase your first FHA property correctly, if you buy a, a duplex or a triplex or a quadplex, you buy it under value, you can at the at the same time you could do value add to the property. You're going to build equity. You'll then be able to refinance it. So even though you only put three and a half percent down, you have ninety seven percent, ninety six point five percent loan. If you buy it at a good price, add value, you should be able to refinance later and be able to do an 80% loan to value because you've built so much equity, the prices went up, the house went up in value. So I'll show you an example. Here, let me give you an example. I'm gonna give you an LA example, okay? All right, I'm gonna give you guys an LA example just so it can make it a little bit easier. You buy a crappy, um, let me see. All right. So you buy a crappy duplex in LA. You get lucky to get a really crappy one and you buy, you pay 500,000 for it. Okay. And you put three and a half percent down, which is going to be $17,500. And then um, you're going to be paying also about another $5,000 in closing costs. So we're going to say you pay $22,000 down on this property. Okay. So 22,000 down is how much you have on this property. You want to make sure that obviously 500,000 for a duplex in LA is really cheap, but at the same time, it's probably a very crappy property. It's in bad shape. Now you're going to live in one side and rent out the other. As you're living there over the next year, you're going to be painting it, changing flooring, maybe cabinets, doing different things, different upgrades. And you're probably going to say spend $20,000 to upgrade it. Now you're going to go let someone move into the nicer side, get additional rent, and you're going to go get a line of credit. 
they're probably going to give you another, they're probably going to give you a line of credit for about $50,000 based off of the price of the property that, you know, based off of how nice you made the property. Okay. You then upgrade the other side, another $20,000. You increase the rents even more. So now because the property is increased in value because you made it nicer and the rent's higher, you should be worth 700000 You're going to go get a loan, 80% loan to value. You'll pay off this loan. You'll pay off these loans, okay? And now you'll have one loan, 80% loan to value. You won't be paying PMI anymore. You won't be paying as high of an interest rate. So instead of, say, paying like, 4.5% for an FHA loan plus PMI, you'll be at a 3.5% loan with no PMI. So you're going to save like $5,000 a year in interest. At that point, you're going to be owner occupied. You're going to be bringing in better rent from the property. You'll be able to likely get a line of credit and your line of credit will be about up to $220,000, depending on your, your income, depending on different factors, but can be as high as $220,000. So this is an additional line of credit that you built off of the equity that you have. You then use this money to buy your next deal. Now, let's say you're not in LA. You're in Florida. You're in Arizona, where you can get duplexes in certain markets for half this price. Okay, this is 250. This is gonna be 350. This is only gonna be 100. The numbers work the same. You just have to find the deal. You just have to be comfortable to pull the trigger. You have to make sure that you don't psych yourself out and say, you know what? This deal's too good to be true. It's probably a lie. It's probably a fake. I probably ran my numbers wrong. You can't think that way. You got to study your market enough to know I ran the number so many times that this is going to work. That I can build the value in this property. That I can increase the rents in this property. That I know the rents in this area are is worth $2,000 and this one's at $1,500. Well, if I do some upgrades, I can make the rent this for this unit as well $2,000. Just keep working. Keep preparing. Keep studying. Get yourself ready. And remember this, I'm basically giving the class away at $297. If you don't think you're able to do any of this or not able, if you don't want to do this, then yeah, don't, don't buy the course. But if you're saying, I want to spend $22,000 to buy a property and you're unwilling to invest $300 into your education, there's something wrong. So again, I'm not telling you when to buy it. What I'm telling you is if you want to be good, spend the time. If you haven't read the books that I've told you guys to read for the last year and a half, something's wrong. Do you really want it? If you really want it, study the books. Read the book. The book is like, these books are like $8 on Amazon. I mean, get the books, read them. If you want to be successful, put in the work, you will be successful. It's pretty easy. Um, what's hard is your gut. Until you put in enough practice, trust me, my gut was rattled many times. But after I got through it and I pushed myself through it, I got out stronger with a stronger gut so I could do bigger deals. So when I did the last deal that was like $1.7 million, I didn't sweat it because I was so used to it. I got my gut built up more and more. I was able to build my strength up that I can handle that type of deal. So Edgar says, uh, hey, so I've kept hearing on that buying gold is a good way to protect yourself from inflation. Where would you buy gold? Is it through stocks or actual physical gold? Try to buy physical gold, but there's so little physical gold out there right now because the demand is so high that they're charging like 12% premiums on top of it. So right now I'm buying gold, G-O-L-D, the ticker on the, on the you know, on, online from the, it's a stock. And, um, this way that's a gold mining company. So, you know, that's an option.
So is it really that simple? Buy a multi-unit property, rent it out for a couple of years until it goes up in value and then sell it? Um, yes, it is that simple. But you, it is important that you buy in a good area because if you don't buy in a good area, it won't go up in value. Second, it's important that you don't overpay for the property. So you need to study your area. If everything in your area sells for $200 a square foot and you buy it for that type of property, it's worth $200 a square foot and you pay $220, then yeah, in a few years later, your property is only going to be worth $220 because you overpaid. What you want to do is find an area where everything say $220 and you try to get it for like $170 a square foot. Then you already bought it at a price that's winning. Now, if it's the property needs work, then maybe 170 is too much. Maybe you need to buy it for like 150 because yeah, you're, it's going to be worth 200 when you're done, but you have to have some profit for your time that you wasted while you upgraded it. So that's what I do. I find properties that are worth, for example, 200 a square foot. I buy them at 150 a square foot and then I upgrade it. And then I have some room in there for a profit for myself for the energy and the time and the effort I put in. At that point, I don't normally sell it because you have to pay commissions and fees every time you sell. What I normally do is just do a cash out refinance or get a line of credit on it. This way I can extract my equity. I get the money, the profit that I made from this deal without paying all those taxes, commissions, and fees. I then use that money to go buy the next deal. Now, again, I understand how the stock market works. I understand how different uh, ways of making money and investing work. The reason I do real estate is because I find it to be the best return on investment, the lowest taxes, and sometimes normally no taxes paid at all, and it's very easy to continually grow. Again, most millionaires became millionaires through real estate. What are your thoughts on getting loans from private equity or hard money versus conventional loans? I mean, obviously, hard money loans are 10 to 15 percent, where a conventional loan is like 3.5 to 5 percent. So you're paying a lot more money. Normally, it's not you don't go to hard money lenders or private money unless you can't qualify for a conventional loan or the terms of it uh, are better. Um, no, no one really goes to private money or hard money because um, – for any reason other than that it's hard for them to qualify for a conventional loan. Is Tampa too high now? I think Tampa is high. I think everywhere is too high right now, to be honest with you. Very few markets and very few properties are worthwhile. I do believe there's going to be a significant drop in real estate in 12 to 24 months. Many large investors believe the same thing. Uh, so I know that uh, I know it's going to happen. The gold stock I'm in is G-O-L-D. My landlord is charging $200 less than what I'm paying for new renters who sign a lease for 12 months. How can I ask my landlord to reduce my rent since my lease is ending soon and they ask me to renew? It's pretty simple. You just ask. Just, just, just say it. Just say, hey, I would like, you know, I know that you're the, the, the current, this is what you need to say. I know the current market rate is this much, which is $200 less than what I'm paying. I would like you to reduce it to that amount of money. This way I can avoid moving and you know that I'm good on the rent rate. I'm good on the rent. So you don't have to worry about getting a new tenant that might not pay you. So I think it's best for you and me. It's good for me because I don't have to waste my time moving to go into a place that's that's closer to market rate, which is $200 or less. And it's good for you because you know I'm going to pay my rent and you don't have to risk finding a new tenant that might not pay you uh, when they move in. Then it's a win-win. Not, well, you owe me this or like, you know, I want this. Well, it's not I want this. Hey, this is how it's good for you. So if you guys DM me, uh, I'll just send you the list of books that I suggest reading. Would you say Palm Harbor is close to Clearwater? Yes. But finding a multi-unit in Palm Harbor is like super hard. 
um, so we can learn how to buy and manage multi-units in your course or other things as well. So my course is mostly regarding buying multi-units and fixing and getting your personal finances in order. It is not to uh, manage rental properties. That, that's a whole nother topic. Uh, but you will understand how to get your personal finances in order and how to uh, buy multi-units. So right now you just hold money, wait for the market to drop. Um, no, I'm buying, I bought some uh, some crypto and I bought some gold GOLD ticker. Um, and I'm going to be, uh, I have a flip that's under contract. So it's a house that's like less than half value that I'm uh, are buying and going to be renovating. And then I'm going to be selling it when it's when reno renovation is done. So right now, just hold money, wait for the market to drop. Um, yes, I would basically hold money and wait for the market to drop because um, if you do, cannot flip properties or if you don't have a side hustle, but you should always try to find a side hustle, extra ways to make money. So, uh, you know, invest in some whatever your hobby is, invest in that thing to make additional money. Where did I find the flip? MLS. When it hit the MLS, within 10 minutes, I bought it. Um, which crypto do I own? Ripple. XRP. Can you give me one more example? So, uh, what example do you guys want? Where's one other another real estate example? Uh, can you really find good deals on MLS? You can if you're fast. Like again, I I know my market, so the second I see a property for sale, I know right away if it's a good deal. So I call right away to buy it. Like again, within ten minutes, I bought it. Um, normally, I find one to two good deals a year. Yes, I mean XRP. Could you explain the process of how you bought that flip? You found that on the MLS and it was listed way below market value. Uh, yes, it was listed way below market value because it needed a lot of work. It needs um, at least $100,000 worth of work. So I, I bought it for about $300,000. I'm going to put in a hundred into it and it's going to be worth between five to 600000 Best way for a 16 year old to make money during this pandemic. Um, learn a trade, like um, learn how to edit videos, learn how to do Photoshop, learn how to do something uh, with, uh, you know, all the new technologies we're using and then go out there and do work on up Upwork and then offer your service, do some stuff for free. Do it a couple, do, do that. When you're doing it for free, people can test you out and then feel comfortable. After they feel comfortable for, with you, they're probably going to keep wanting to do work with you. So you're going to get more and more work. How did I learn and do most of the stuff I'm doing right now? I did it all for free. I worked for people for free. And that's how I learned taxes. That's how I learned everything I know now is because I did it for free. And then there's some stuff that I wanted to learn that I had to pay for. So um, you got to give to get. All right, where do we mostly find duplex and multiple in Florida that you can rent easy? I mean, almost everywhere in Florida, they rent pretty easy. I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a good market. All right, so I'm going to answer this question. I'm going to do another example. Uh, 
Let me see. What is, do you want me to give a? Do you want me to give a flip example, or do you want me to give a a rental property example? And do you want me to give a rental property example on the cash flow numbers, or do you want me to give a rental property example on you know buying, fixing, and refinancing? Again, all those different examples are in the course, but uh, in more detail. But I want to try to do it for you guys here. Flip example. All right, Mary set up first. Flip example it is. So how did I know this is a good deal? First, in this market that I was looking in, where I found the property that was for sale, homes go for 170 to 200 a square foot. Okay, they go for 170 to 200 square foot. FYI, on YouTube, the video is not backwards. I know on IG, it's backwards. So, they go for 170 to 200 square foot. This house is about 4,000 square feet. Legally, it's not 4,000. Legally, it's only about 3,200. But they have, a, they have an extra about 800 square feet in the attic that they've refinished, but it's not legal. Whatever. 3,200 to $200 a square foot is 640,000. And... They're getting free about 800 square feet upstairs. They were selling it for $289,000. I mean, that's pretty much a no-brainer, right? So I'm thinking there has to be a lot wrong for me not to make money on this deal. So let me see how long, and it's not even money, right? It's not how much money is it going to cost me to fix this deal. It's how long is it going to take me to do it? Because getting stuck in a deal for a long time, what's hard is being have your money stuck in a deal for a long time. It's not even how much money you're spending. But if you're stuck in this deal for a year, even though you're going to make good money, it sucks because you're going to pay a lot in hard money. Your hard money loans are very expensive. So you're just going to, it's going to, it's going to stink. So, now, I basically said, all right, if I spend $100,000 in remodel costs, the closing cost on a loan for like this is around 7% between realtor fees and then the closing costs, the title insurance, everything else, around 7%. So we're looking at about $42,000 in closing costs. Three, eighty-nine, four, potentially two hundred and nine thousand dollars on this deal. Now, this is the thing. Even if I don't make two hundred and nine thousand dollars on this deal, and this is purchase, remodel, closing cost. And then on top of that, you can add $20,000 in fees for miscellaneous. So what I'm saying is there's so much room for error, it doesn't matter. So guys, okay, one second. Sorry about that. So, um, so that is what it looks like on a flip. Really that simple. You need to figure out the basics are this. What is a dollar per square foot? What am I going to be able to, what is it worth completed? What am I buying it for? How much is the remodel going to cost? What's my closing cost? What's my carrying cost, which means how much is the loan going to cost me for the hard money loan? Once you figure all of that out, you can determine, you can run numbers. That's, that's the, the basics of running numbers. 
Now you just have to study your market to know what areas justify the rent, the, the dollars per square foot, what do remodels cost, and what's hidden behind walls, like what could potentially go wrong. Does that all that make sense? All right. All right, guys. Okay, so there's about five days left on the sale for the course. It's going to go to $1,000 afterwards. It really doesn't make a difference to me, but you guys really wanted the course, so I made it for you guys and made it super cheap. Uh, this is basically covers the technology costs and the video editing and so on. So it's on sale. Link is in the bio. And um, study it. Do what it what I teach in the course because when the deals come, you want to make sure you're able to buy the deals, okay? Um Everyone be blessed. I will be back next week, or this week actually, Sunday, um, at 10 p.m. Bring your questions. And if you have examples of properties, like if you're looking at a property, get the address. We'll uh, pull it up here. I'll pull it up. I'll run the numbers on the board for you. All right? Awesome, guys. Well, everyone, thanks, Lucy. Yeah, Lucy's in the course. If you actually, when you buy the course and you're going in there, you'll see in the comment section, she has a ton of great questions. <laughs> so, guys, everyone have a blessed night, and um, I'll see you guys Sunday.